I'm a board member with Indivisible Kansas City. Thank you for coming today. We are an all-volunteer group and our organization has two main goals, to educate and engage constituents and to hold elected officials accountable. And one of our core issues, both at federal and state levels, is health care. Currently, more than 62 million American women have insurance coverage for no-cost birth control thanks to the ACA. Birth control is an important and necessary tool to assist women with family planning and medical issues such as endometriosis or anemia. This provision in the ACA has saved $1.4 billion in 2013 alone. Women are not the only ones who use birth control. Transgender men and non-binary people have the same right to affordable reproductive health care as everyone else. The executive order signed last month means that employers would be able to force employees to pay out of pocket for birth control access. This creates a financial burden on American women, their partners, and families by forcing them to shoulder as much as $1,100 more per year per person. Affordable health care birth control is an economic issue. Nearly half of women aged 18 to 34 in households making under $75,000 say they have had to delay having children because of economic hardship. 77% of women believe birth control coverage should stay as it is. And young people's access to contraception is a key reason teen pregnancy rate in the U.S. has declined. I want to take a moment to share a personal story from a person in Lee Summit whose birth control experience brings these statistics to life. She says, when I was 15 and made the decision to become sex sexually active, my 17-year-old boyfriend drove me to the nearest Planned Parenthood to get the pill. If it weren't for Planned Parenthood, I don't know that I would have felt comfortable enough to go to my family doctor to ask for birth control or to be able to afford it otherwise. I could have been a teen mom if it weren't for Planned Parenthood. Flash forward nine years, and I just use my insurance through work to get an IUD because I don't plan to have ch children for a few years. With my insurance, the entire thing was free. It was tremendously helpful to me, and now I will be protected for five years. I feel in control of when and how I have children. Affordable birth control helps me stay in control of my life. We are here today because we ourselves our partners, our friends, and family members have all had similar experiences. We are here for them. We are here on this day, which is the national campaign to prevent teen and unplanned pregnancy, to stand up for everyone's right to use birth control and to have it covered like any other prescription. Now, let me introduce you to one of the most awesome people I know, and she's going to emcee this event. Elise Higgins has advocated for reproductive rights for nearly a decade. It began at KU where she studied political science, women, gender, and sexuality studies. She has brought passion to this issue both as a board member with URGE and as a lobbyist in her position as the Regional Director of Public Policy and Organizing at Planned Parenthood, Great Plains. She's currently completing her graduate studies at KU. We're so excited to have her. Please welcome Elise. How you doing, Kansas City? <laughs> Can you believe we have to be doing this right now? I mean, I should be in class. All right, I'm gonna lead us in some chants and then I'm gonna introduce our first speaker. Sound good? All right. We're gonna do Our Bodies, Our Rights, Kansas City Stand and Fight. Can we do that? All right, here we go. Our bodies, our rights, Kansas City, stand and fight. Our bodies, our rights, Kansas City, stand and fight. Let them hear you there. Our rights, Kansas City, stand and fight. Our bodies, our rights, Kansas City, stand and fight. All right, you sound amazing. Give yourselves a little hand, a little tiny hand. That's right. Excellent. Well, I am so excited to introduce a friend, my former Planned Parenthood intern, Catherine Ammon. Uh, Catherine is a junior at KU studying political science and history and women's studies. 
They are the president of Students United for Reproductive and Gender Equity at KU, and they advocate for students' reproductive and gender equity. They're also, of course, a former Planned Parenthood intern and have been to a lot of these rallies, so please join me in welcoming Catherine. Said, until recently, employers and insurance providers were, recover were required to cover all forms of birth control under the Affordable Care Act. But just a few weeks ago, the Trump administration took steps to immediately give my university or my parents' employer the power to decide my birth control coverage. Chances are most college students never had to pay for birth control today due to the Affordable Care Act because it considers birth control a preventative health care. But depending on how students get in their insurance, they could lose coverage or even be a decision from their parents, employer, or university. So I'm a non-binary person, and before I left for college, I wanted a highly effective way to prevent pregnancy because I knew I didn't want kids while I was in college. I chose a Mirena IUD, and I was nervous because I had heard that those were about $2,000, $3,000, but because of the Affordable Care Act, I didn't have to pay anything for my IUD, and I have been covered for the past two years. In fact, access to birth control is an issue that affects everyone, including trans and non-binary people. The ACA means that birth control is covered, end of story. But many people think of birth control as a women's issue, but it's not just women that were biologically right. born female who need access to birth control. Right. This people affects people of all genders, and we need to make sure that young people who do not look like how we imagine a woman to look like still receive this service. Birth control is about more than just preventing pregnancy. I have friends who are trans men, and one has polycystic ovarian syndrome. He has to take birth control for his health. And I have another friend who is a trans man who chose to get an IUD so he could stop his periods and help his gender dysphoria. All the reasons women use birth control are reasons why trans and non-binary people need birth control. And they need access to centers like Planned Parenthood that provide care to everyone, no matter their gender. Yeah. Woo! See a doctor for your birth control. Woo! All right, we appreciate doctors, don't we? Yes. Our next speaker is Dr. Valerie French. She is a practicing OBGYN in Kansas City. She sees women every single day who use birth control for medical conditions and to choose if and when they become parents. She has dedicated her career to empowering women so they can make the best decisions for themselves and their families. Let's give it up for Dr. Valerie French. Woo! Well, good afternoon. good afternoon. I am here as a physician and a member of ACOG, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the nation's leading organization in women's health care. The recent announcement to allow any employer, university, or insurer to deny coverage of birth control for moral or religious reasons denies women access to vital health care. As women's health experts, we know that medicine and science should determine what constitutes good health care, not your boss's personal beliefs. Right. Two-thirds of American women of reproductive age count on contraception to prevent pregnancy. Hello? Oh, yes. <laughs> Almost all women have used contraception at some point in their lives. Every day, I see how access to contraception improves my patients' lives. This week, Monday actually, I took care of a nurse, I'll call her Brittany, who saw me for birth control. Because her insurance covers contraception with no extra fees, we focused our visit on the birth control that would work best for her and not how she would pay for it. <clears throat> Brittany isn't ready to start a family, and she knows that babies are healthiest when parents are ready for them. 
You see, Brittany works at the NICU, the neonatal intensive care unit, where she takes care of the very sickest babies. She and I both know that a child born as a result of an unintended pregnancy is at greater risk of premature birth and low birth weight. We know that babies who are born early or too small have a greater chance of dying in their first year of life and suffering long-term health consequences. Brittany now has the birth control that she needs to plan her family and her future pregnancy in a way that works for her. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, our nation has achieved a 30-year low in unintended pregnancy. <laughs> Teen pregnancy rates are the lowest in recorded history. <laughs> These are tremendous achievements, and we need to keep fighting for more progress like this. We cannot afford to go back in time. Exactly! I do not want to treat women differently because their employer doesn't cover contraception. Two weeks ago, I saw a young woman, I'll call her Tabitha, who has a kind of blood cancer called lymphoma. She's going through chemotherapy to treat her cancer. The chemotherapy would be toxic to a developing pregnancy, and so her cancer doctors recommended that she see me to talk about birth control. We discussed her pregnancy goals after treatment and reviewed what would be safe for her with her medical conditions. Tabitha decided on a long-term form of birth control. Despite the complexities of her medical condition, we spent the majority of our visit talking about how she would pay for her birth control. Because you see, Tabitha's insurance, which she has insurance, doesn't cover any contraception. It's going to pay for her chemotherapy, and it's not going to pay for her birth control. Sad. Sick. Tabitha is struggling to figure out what she's going to do, and she's not alone. Because one in three women in the U.S. say they could not afford birth control if it costs more than $10 a month. All of my patients come to me for compassionate, comprehensive health care. I give them medical advice based on what's best for them, working with each woman to understand her life and her health. No woman should ever be denied health care because her boss will cover the type of contraception that's best for her. Whether to use contraception or which method to use is a private medical decision that should be made in consultation with a woman's health care provider and the woman herself, not her, not her boss. Women should have access to contraception without extra fees, regardless of where they work or where they live. It's time to put patients over policy. That's for women's health. Birth control is essential women's health care. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. French. Woo! Are we here for Dr. French's patients? Yeah. Woo! One more time so they can hear you in the federal building. Are we here for her patients? Yes! yes! That's right. Ah, so proud of you all. All right. Let's do some more chants, y'all. You want to do some more chants? I think we do. I think we do. When I say, what do we want, what do you say? What do you think you say? Birth control. Birth control, that's right. And when do we want it? Now! Yes. What do we want? Birth control! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Birth control. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Birth control. When do we want it? Now. One more time. What do we want? Birth control. When do we want it? Now. All right. I think they heard you in the building, y'all. I think they heard you. Well done. All right. Our next speaker is Diana Martinez, who is an immigrant rights activist working with the Kansas-Missouri Dream Alliance. She's been organizing with the Alliance since 2010 educating and engaging immigrant youth as well as pushing Congress for a Clean Dream Act through direct action and community pressure. She's also worked with Stand Up KC, fighting for worker rights and a living wage. Let's hear for Diana. Hey everyone. Uh, so we know we're all here today because we believe that healthcare is a human right. Yes. And we also know we fought hard to win better health care, especially reproductive health care. 
and we fought hard to have birth control covered over, covered under our health care. And we fought hard to take steps towards reproductive justice for all. And we are not going to let those victories be turned back. Is that right? Woo! But at the same time that we have fought, fought hard to gain those rights and protect those gains, uh, we know we can't back down from a bigger fight. And this is and this is a fight for a better future for everyone. A future where all people are ensured their basic human rights to health care, a living wage, fair and equal treatment under the law, education, respect, and dignity. We are going to do as Obama used to say. We're gonna need to walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. <laughs> You know, and even though those gains we've made, um, even though we've had all the gains we've made, there are still wide gaps in those who have access to health care, including reproductive health care. And the reality that many undocumented and low-wage workers face is one without health care. Our undocumented brothers and sisters and working people who struggle on low pay often cannot afford health care and do not receive any health care from their employers. And politicians in Missouri refuse to do the right thing and expand Medicaid. And that's not right. right. That's right. And it's not good enough to simply defend the gains that we've made. There are still too many people in this country that cannot afford to get a, see a doctor or get a prescription. And there's too many people out there without access to birth control. Wow. We need to demand the right to birth control no matter where you were born or right. where you work. That's right. Woo! Healthcare oh, oh, oh. is a fundamental right for everyone. If we do not fight for equality for all people, despite, despite, the, uh, despite the fight we have, um, the expansion, so if we do not, <laughs> we have a long fight ahead of us, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But if we do not fight for equality for all people and the expansion uh, for access to our fundamental needs like healthcare, we will continue to see the erosion of our past gains. The erosions of our fundamental rights as humans doesn't come in one fell swoop as we've seen through the handmaids. It comes with one small policy at a time that builds upon one another. And that's why we need to make sure that our healthcare choices aren't dictated, aren't dictated by the whims of our employers. Your faith may lead you to, cho to choices to not take birth control, and that's okay. But your faith cannot dictate my healthcare needs. No matter if you employ me, or if you're elected to Congress, you don't get to choose my health care decision. So we must demand that health care be considered a fundamental right for everyone. This is why we need to fight with our low wage worker, low wage working brothers and sisters to ensure that all people make a living wage and have a voice on the job. And that's why we need to fight for with our undocumented brothers and sisters because no human being is illegal. Right. And we need a clean room act. We need to fight with them to bring them out of the shadows so that they can also get the health care that they deserve. And these are not separate fights. Labor rights are a feminist issue. Right? Immigration is a feminist issue. When we fight together to push for equality, dignity, and freedom for all people, we know that we can win a better future for everyone. Thank you so much. She's teaching us about walking toward justice at the intersections. That is amazing. Let's hear it again for Diana. Thank you. Thank you. All right, friends, I think we already practiced this, but just in case, when birth control is under attack, 
What do we do? Stand up, my That's right. Let's do that a couple times, huh? When birth control is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, my That's right. When birth control is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, my One more time. When birth control is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, my That's right. Y'all look so beautiful. All right, our next speaker is Tawana Evans Coates. She is a fourth year medical student at KU Med and a reproductive rights advocate. As a Wyandotte County native, KCK shout out, she's very much in tune with her community where she's been working in local high schools to educate students about contraceptive needs. And she's currently in the process of applying for an OBGYN residency. Please welcome Tawana. It's so nice to be here with everyone. I am so excited to be able to stand here and share my story on such a platform with so many beautiful faces. Growing up in Kansas City, like many of my neighbors, I grew up in a low-income household. A lot of my family unfortunate circumstances were tied to unintentional teen pregnancies. I have had many friends and family members who was pregnant by the age of 15 and 16. Part of it was due to them not being able to access birth control, not being fully aware of the birth control options that they had available to them, or misconceptions that society placed on them obtaining birth control. But I wasn't exempt because my first pregnancy was at the age of 18. I had just graduated Wandai High School. I was headed to college on a full ride academic scholarship. And during this time, I did not have access to birth control. I did not know where in my community I could go to obtain birth control without any judgment or for a low cost. Therefore, I could have became a teen mom. But I made the difficult decision to terminate the pregnancy and not bring a young person into an unstable environment. I chose to give my future a second chance. But that decision is what taught me the importance of birth control. During this time, I received the most education I had ever received on birth control types, effectiveness, and proper usage. My decision has inspired me to help other teenagers, especially minorities, because they still have the highest teen pregnancy birth rates today. My decision is why I advocate for all teenagers and women to have the right to choose whatever birth control method they want. My decision is why I advise young women to consider using long-acting reversible contraception, such as IUDs and implants, due to them being 99% effective and their easy usability. Access to birth control has allowed me to choose when I wanted to start a family and it has allowed me to focus on my career goals, which is why I have been able to obtain my Master of Public Health degree and in May, I will be graduating with my medical degree and I will be a doctor. In the future, I want my five-year-old daughter to have access to all the correct information to choose the best birth control method for her and not have any barriers to obtaining it. Thank you. Woo! All right, one more hand for Tawana. Thank you so much. And congratulations on medical school. That's amazing. All right, y'all. Our next speaker is gonna be your friend and mine, Ms. Allison Dre. She's the executive director of NARAL Pro-Choice Missouri and has long worked for progressive issues. And since moving to Missouri in 2008, Allison has worked at Planned Parenthood of the St. Louis region and the Missouri Progressive Vote Coalition. Currently, she serves on the board of the Missouri Family Health Council, is vice president of the St. Louis chapter of Empower Missouri, is president of the Freedom of Choice Council, and may I say, is anti-abortion least favorite person in the Missouri Capitol. So please join me welcoming Allison. Thanks, Elise. Um, back in early October when the Trump mandate came down um, on the birth control mandate, was a time when the nation was grappling with very severe problems. 
from healing after the worst mass shooting in modern American history to the devastation in Puerto Rico, leaving millions of Americans without electricity or safe drinking water. The fact that our president decides to spend his time and energy on meddling with women's birth control speaks volumes. Under the guise of religious freedom, the Trump administration implemented a plan that allows employers, for any reason, to deny their employees coverage for birth control. This was never about policy. And when the anti-choice GOP undermines the rights and takes away access to basic health care, they're clearly saying that a woman's health and well-being is not their priority. While they claim that this is about religious liberty, it is clear that there is nothing more than a license to discriminate against people who don't agree with them. This discriminates the Affordable Care Act's birth control benefit, which saves women over $1.4 billion a year. Since the birth control benefit was implemented, the United States abortion rate hit its low point since the passage of Roe v. Wade. The birth control coverage benefit was the single greatest advancement in reproductive health care in a generation. This policy ensured that millions of women could access affordable birth control. It gave them more control over their lives and their own destinies. Coming on the heels of a 20-week abortion ban vote and the failure to reauthorize CHIP the, a month ago, this action by the Trump administration reminds us that the anti-choice GOP is trying to impose a radical worldview on the country. For their pro-life party, their hypocrisy is astounding. In the world, women should not be able to prevent pregnancy, choose an abortion, or have support in raising families. Birth, con birth control is the key to our ability to stay healthy, take care of our planned families, and contribute to the communities and to our society, all things that this GOP apparently stands in opposition to. But giving our bosses decision-making power over whether and which birth control we can have goes the extra mile to being destructive and demeaning. Donald Trump is flat out wrong in going against public well-being and public opinion on this. He should reverse course immediately. Yes. Thank you so much, my friend. We're going to turn this one off. Turn this one on. <laughs> Do we have to respect women, y'all? Yeah. Yes. Do we have to respect trans and non-binary people, too? Yeah. All right. How about immigrants? Yeah. How about doctors? Yeah. All right. That's what I like to hear. Our next speaker is Dr. Micah W. Kubik. He is the, the ACLU Executive Director. He joined them in January 2015 with more than 15 years of experience in civil liberties, civil rights, and racial justice work. Previously, he served as the Director of Planning, Development, and Evaluation at the Full Employment Council and as a Senior Program Officer here at the Greater Kansas City Local Initiative Support Corporation. Micah is active in many community organizations, including service on many boards of directors, and is also, no pressure, one of the best speakers I have ever heard. So please, <laughs> join me in welcoming Micah. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, we'll try again. I say good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, I have to tell you that I am sorry and sad that we have to be here this afternoon to do this at all. Uh, I'm sorry and I'm sad, but I'm not really surprised. Uh, is anyone really surprised? Uh, because you know what? I heard President Trump in 2015 and 2016. I heard President Trump when he said that he wanted to take away access to reproductive health care through the ACA. I heard him when he said that he wanted to defund all of the health care providers providing reproductive health care to women around this country. And I even heard him when he said that he wanted to punish women who gain access to reproductive health care. You know, it was so long ago now, and there have been so, 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 so many things that he said since that we forget. We forget that he said he wanted to punish women who exercise the right to determine decisions about their own bodies. 
And so I am not surprised that we have to be here today to guarantee access to birth control. I'm sorry and I'm sad, but I'm not surprised because that's because uh, these folks want, as the doctor said before, to go back in time. They want to go back in time, not just to the 1970s, before Roe v. Wade, before the court said that women have the right to make decisions about their own health care. They want to go back before 1965, before Griswold versus Connecticut, when the Supreme Court said that you have access to birth control. They want to go all the way back all the way back before the country even began, before there was such a thing as a constitution that said that you have the right to make decisions about your own body. And because they want to go back in time, it's not a surprise what they're doing today. But I have to tell you, we won't go back. We won't go back. We're not interested in going back to a time when people don't have rights. We're interested in moving forward towards greater justice and equality and greater freedom. And I'm talking about real freedom now, not this phony, perverse interpretation of religious freedom that they've cooked up to stop people from exercising their rights. Because when I think about religious freedom, I think about your right to worship where you want, when you want, with whom you want, how you want, and if you want. What they mean when they say religious freedom and what they're using for this cockamamie scheme is that religious freedom means I have the freedom to make up my own interpretation of my religion and then foist it on you. That I have the right through my religious freedom to determine what you do, where you do it, with whom you do it, and how you do it. And that ain't freedom at all. It's the opposite of freedom. Uh, and we're not interested in that. We're not interested in what uh, the president has cooked up. We're not interested in going back in time. We're only moving forward, and that's why we're saying, get your hands off birth control. One more time, say it with me. Hands off my birth control. Hands off my birth control. That's what I like to hear. One more time, a hand for Mr. Micah Kubik. Thank you. So, doctor. <laughs> Not a real doctor. Not a real doctor. <laughs> All right, friends, <clears throat> I think that's our speakers, but we are not done here today because I have a call to action for everybody. Are you here to take action too? Yeah. All right, are you here to do more than cheer? Yeah. All right, one of the easiest and quickest ways to make an impact is to make your voice heard by submitting your opposition to these new rules that take away access to birth control on the official register. So you do that by visiting, and please take out your phones. You can pause in live streaming for a second. Go to keepbcfree.com. One more time, that's keepbcfree.com. Everybody on the street hear that too? Reporters, excellent. <laughs> to submit your comment in opposition to the Trump administration's new rules. We need to submit as many comments as we possibly can by December 5th. Write that one down too, December 5th. And while there, you can even, if you want, send an invoice to President Trump for the potential cost of your birth control to highlight the tremendous impact these rules could have across the country. We cannot we cannot sit quietly and allow these new rules to be imposed on us without a fight. Can you all do that? Yes! Are y'all gonna go to keepbcfree.com? Yes! That's what I like to hear. All right, I wanna give a hand to our handmaids right back here. They're not gonna look at you because that's not what handmaids do, but they have done a beautiful job of standing behind us and remind us of what's at risk if we lose our right to make decisions about our bodies and about our future. So one more time, give these handmaidens a hand. All right, friends, we know that we are only a fraction of the power in Kansas City that is gonna be working against these new regulations. And so I want you to tell me what Kansas City looks like. Show me what KC looks like. This, this is, is what KC looks like. like. Show me what KC looks like. This is what KC looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what a feminist looks like. This is what a feminist looks like. Show me what a feminist looks like. This is what a feminist looks like. Show me what America looks like. This is what America looks like. Looks like. Show me what America looks like. This is what America looks like. All right, y'all. I will see you on the internet and in the streets. Yeah.